Praise the Lord, dear friend. Thomas Smith on the fourth here coming to you live. Just wanted to share a couple of things. Uh, uh, have, I've been working on uh, several new projects, some messages that we've done, and uh, some books that I'm writing. Very exciting, and I have a new CD series. If you can see it here, it's called The Power to Create Wealth. The Power to Create Wealth. I did this live in Nigeria. And this is off the chain. I have it on audio CD and also on DVD. Uh, on audio is two discs. Because they wouldn't fit on one. And then uh, uh, the DVD is one disc. But it's got the entire message in, in video. From live from the conference there. And they're, they're available now on thomasmanton.com for a love gift of $20 or more. Or more is a key because it's a donation. We're not into selling things. And, you know, every day people approach me with businesses to sell things. And I just, I have a hard time, honestly, getting in the groove of that. Because my time is caught up in the presence of God. And uh, anything we offer is for the enrichment and empowerment of people. And we just want them to, people to succeed and then tell me about it. You know, I love when a man of God says, hey, if I'm teaching you to prosper... It's not so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it to help you. And as I help advance the kingdom, of course, you're going to help advance the kingdom. We all work together. It's great like that. You know, Deuteronomy 8. Um, and to differentiate, you know, from something here, because a lot of people say, well, God, you know, you know, listen, God is the source of every good thing. Okay. He's Jehovah Jireh to us. We see that in Genesis uh, where one of his names was Jehovah Jireh, means the Lord who sees our future and will see to it that it happens. People say, is the Lord my provider? Yes, it is. Because, but it's not just someone, you know, who's giving you money to pay your bills, excuse me, or expenses. He's, uh, he's actually, you know, overseeing your life and your destiny. So when I talked about wealth in these, and, and, and there's another one coming out uh, called Superabundance, God's great wealth transfer for you. I'm going to have that coming out next. You can order these now. And uh, uh, if you do just donate, donate in the donation section. Uh, we have the cart set up, I think, but I'm just going to check if it's, if it's going through or not. We, ch we tested it. It works. So you can go to the shopping cart on thomasmanton.com. Click the shopping cart if you can find it. If not, just do it in the donations Okay, and uh, $20 or more, some people want to sow a seed, uh, maybe $91 in uh, honor of Psalm 91, the protection chapter, maybe Isaiah 48, 17, 48, 17, it was, I'm the Lord your God that teaches you to profit for the, in honor of the verse of profit making, 111, which is, um, 111, which is, uh, Deuteronomy 111, which says, I am the Lord your God, who will make you a thousand times more than you are. I'll bless you a thousand times more, a thousand times more favor, friends, connections, opportunities, upgrades, you know, uh, resources, situations, all kinds of things that are beneficial to your life. <laughs> Ooh, I, get, I just want to shout when I think about it, you know. It's so exciting, the revelation of God's abundance, that we can work with him and fellowship with him in seed sowing and honoring him with our tithe and all of that, which I do. I love doing that and I love sowing and I'm always doing that. And that's why I'm blessed. One of the reasons I'm because we have things happening. God's just his favor, but you got to work the, the biblical economic system and you can't not work it and expect to be made rich. You know, you say you want to be made rich. You want to be a millionaire. You want to be a, a wealthy person. By the way, don't even start talking billions until you start hitting the millions. I, I have no respect for that. I think that's just foolishness. And the person that usually says something like that is just a wannabe. I'm going to be a billionaire. Well, let's see you become a millionaire and then hit 10 and 20 and 30 and 100. Then you say, well, now you're already on your way. We can pray for that next level. But don't talk. Don't talk all this stuff. Because, you know, talking it and not taking action is not really going to help. You know, one of the action things is like listening to teaching like this, learning, learning about the power to create wealth. I explain in this 
how God begins to work with you in this realm. It's so, listen, it's not because I did the teaching on this, but in, in light of the, 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 what's coming through on this, I have never heard a message like this preached anywhere. And, I, and I'm not saying that to be because I'm involved in it. It's just the Holy Spirit himself that began to bring a teaching through this brilliant mind of Dr. TM4 that he's made this thing. Without, without him, we're nothing. Without him, I'm absolutely nothing. Oh, God. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But without him, we're also nothing. <laughs> Especially when we've given our whole life over to him. And, uh, you know, uh, to be his servant and just trust him for everything. You know, if, if it works out good, great. If it doesn't work out, we're sunk. You know, but God's always there with us. He has angels all around us. He's always there to help us and bless us. And last night I received a prophetic word from a great pastor of mine in the middle of a, of a conference meeting, and he wrote me a message, and he talked about, he had a vision of a chest of gold, and he said, I see this for you, uh, Prophet uh, Dr. TM4, I see this for you, my friend, I see this for you. And he says, you're right at the edge of it, and some great things are about to awaken and happen. I tell you what, wow, I am so honored. Now, can you imagine like a mega minister who's like, one of the top servants of God on planet Earth is in the middle of flowing, and his senior associate would send a word. <sighs> I just could cry thinking about it. It's so, it so touched me so deeply, and it was timely. And the Lord was talking about teaching about in the, in the meeting about harvest and perpetual harvests and all that. So, so here's the point on this that's applicable to you. You want to get involved in this biblical economic thing. I didn't really plan to go all through it, but the Holy Spirit's talking here. This is amazing. Uh, as soon as I switched this on, it started to flow more. I know I wanted to tell you the exciting news that I have these available to ship out now in the U.S. and Canada, overseas like Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria, oh, Ghana, and all the other countries that are writing us in the middle, from the Middle East and Asia and the Philippines and... Malaysia, and I don't know how we're going to send those across the world, the shipping costs, but we'll, we'll figure out a way. Uh, I, wanted to, I want to get a way to online where we can be having these things be downloadable. That takes a minute, so give me a minute. But these CDs I have for you in America, you in Canada, we can just drop them in the post to you, and you'll have them in a few days for a love gift of $20 or more. And I would suggest that you... Target a seed of 48, 17, 91, 111, 77, 55. 55, 11 is also another great verse, and I love this. And, and the, reason I, the reason I do this is because he's, God honors his word. You know, you can just say, well, I'm just going to give $50. I'm just going to give $30. I'm just going to give $100. I'm just gonna... and, and we're not even taking an offering anyway. It's just, this, is, this is for partners and friends to sow seeds. So, I mean... This is not, uh, you know, for, uh, anyway. I, I would rather, you know, do something in light of the scripture and, and get blessed. Now, God wants you to be wealthy. Please understand that. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants to give you the power to create wealth. He wants you to live the super abundant life. He does. He does. He does. He does. He does. He does all day long. He does. Let me show you something else. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on the screen, but another book we're working on now, uh, another one of my books, and I'm writing, I'm writing about 10 new books right now simultaneously or more. I, I haven't counted because, you know, I know I can't get them all out in a day or two or three, I'd, although I love to. But we're, we're building the machinery to be able to uh, get these books out they're going to be coming off the press, but this is a very small screenshot of a sample cover. It's not done yet, but I just thought I'd show it to you. If you can see it, I don't know. It's backwards here. Called The Power of Relationships. The Power of Relationships. I know that's backwards on most screens. The Power of Relationships, and you see all the hands holding together to hold up something. And many others, uh, we were looking through a lot of ways to do the cover, but this is what came up. I, I may revise this more, or we may just go to print and put it out, but uh, this is when I was in uh, Zanzibar, the island of Zanzibar by the sea, and they took me out of the frame of the beach and put, slapped it here, me with my hands up. That's not a very conventional stock cover photo for 
like a, a book, back of a book, but I thought it's great that I'm looking up and I have my hands up. We may leave it there. Uh, or we may change it a bit, but this is just a very new sample that came out that our, one of our designers just did uh, in Africa. So uh, very exciting, okay? <laughs> and we're going to get that book done ASAP, and it is going to be ready also to be printed and shipped. It'll also be available on Amazon and, you know, through the website, etc., to be shipped, but also on Amazon where they can actually print it for you when you order it which is a, another brilliant way to get it. So this, this message here on the power to create wealth is just phenomenal. Again, two CDs and uh, one DVD for a love gift of $20 or more. The book is not available yet, but it will be. And other books are coming out about focus, about decisions, about uh, getting your life unstuck in you know, several different ways and the laws of success and keys to successful living and, and, and a lot more. Uh, so we're very excited about that. And, uh, I'm just overwhelmed at how, how of the revelation, listen here today, the revelation of how much God wants to bless us. He's ready to do it. He is ready, 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 Freddy, ready, 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 or whatever your name is. Thomas, you, what's your name? Say your name out loud. God wants to bless you. Third John 2, the beloved apostle, a real apostle because he spent a lot of time with Jesus, number one, and he produced the fruit of being a real elder, number two, and uh, suffered for Christ and lived for Christ and walked with him, with Jesus himself. You know, people these days call themselves apostle at the drop of a hat. Well, I would ask many who use the title apostle to probably demote themselves a bit and maybe remove the title and just let their name speak and their anointing speak for itself. You know, when you're not anointed, you got to come up with all this self-aggrandizement stuff. But you can call me Thomas Matthew the Fourth just by my name. My work speaks for itself all over planet Earth. We've prophesied over nations. In Kenya, you've seen the election results for the last 18, 19 years. <clears throat> Mac, almost going on 20 years when I began to prophesy over Kenya and every single thing we've said has happened uh, in many other countries of the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the Lord is uh, moving through our ministry to and it's touch multitudes. So that speaks for itself, you know. I don't have to call myself anything. Doctor is affectionate because I'm a doctor of divinity and uh, was, was, was honored with that, you know, uh, designation. Fine. It's good, but Thomas is my, my name. Thomas Manton is my name. And also there's a scripture promise in Proverbs 22, verse 1, and you could believe God for this, uh, you know, too, that says a good name is better to be chosen than great riches. A good name is better to be chosen. Favor on the name. God, God said to Abraham, I'll make your name great, and I'll make you a father of many nations. So was he like Dr. Abraham, Apostle Abraham? I don't know. I met someone and they had on their card, Apostle, Prophet, Evangelist, Pastor, Teacher, Reverend, Doctor, and their name. And it was a single mother from uh, Newark, New Jersey. And I was in a television studio there in New Jersey doing a program. And I met her and I, I looked at the card and I wanted to say, dear, which one? Which one befits you the most? Are you an evangelist? Are you a pastor? Do you do teaching? Are you prophetic? But apostle, I would say automatically I would want to say uh, I wouldn't be one, one say to take that title because an apostle is a trailblazer. An apostle is a leader who's done a lot, you know, has a track record in the other offices of ministry. You don't just wake up as an apostle. So let's let's uh, let's grow up, people. Let's get mature and let's humble ourselves. And just let the fruit of our life speak for what God is doing through us. And only the Holy Spirit can produce the miraculous anyway. You know, the, 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 the miraculous only comes through, um, through the Holy Spirit moving. You, you know, your job, your work, is your diligence should be in having more relationship with the Word. God honors the Word. You know, someone was saying these days are people Calvinists or, or Armenians, you know, meaning, meaning of the Christian faith. 
Well, why would God give uh, John Calvin or this whoever this Armenian guy is, if that's what it's called or whatever his name is, why would God give an assignment like that to two men to, di- you know, to differentiate in the church? Which uh, persuasion are we of? Absolute hogwash. And I would say I'm neither. I don't know what Calvin... Calvin's like, you, you know, there's only some that are saved. One thing they say is one day, some are predestined for salvation and that's it. You can't, like, take it away. And then there's other people that just cannot be saved because uh, it just wasn't, you know, in the cards, so to speak. In the, I'm making a joke. In the predestination plan, if God had one. God said, no, I want everybody to repent. And I wish that no one would go to hell because I made it for the devil and his angels, not for people. It's not predestined for any person to go to hell. They choose to go there. I'm trying to get this in line. I like order. Okay, but it's not, it's not, it has a mind of its own today. All right, good. A little bit better. So, <laughs> and this, what do I do? Praise the Lord. So the Lord is, uh, it has his word. Hmm? And his word is what, and I, and I cover a lot of scripture in this. Oh my. And, uh, uh, and the book, on, the one on superabundance is coming out next. I'm so excited about it. I cover a lot of scriptures. The Lord had me go through at least 30 passages of scripture or more in that one message on a Sunday morning in a great conference we did. Multitudes of people came, packed out, out, the, out you know, blew the whole city up. I mean, it, with uh, the power of the Holy Ghost. It was a major event. And... Scripture, 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 scripture. Passages of scripture where God decided to, to bless his own servants. And by the way, all of the patriarchs of, in the Bible were all wealthy men financially. You got to know that. And it, let's look back to our heritage, you know, and it says if you're, if you're Christ, you're, you're, you're Abraham's seed. That means also the promises that were made to Abraham to be what? To be blessed, to be a blessing, to be rich. Uh, Genesis 13, 2. To be like, uh, have land like the sands of the seashore and everywhere you look, I'll give it to you. And all this abundance of real estate and property and people working for them, 318 personal, uh, personal uh, household staff, you know, trained staff in his own house. You know, imagine, imagine that. And, uh, uh, you know, you say that's your, that's your father. So that, you know, we need to claim that heritage more. I'm teaching here. We need to claim that heritage and say, like, I'm going to have that. I'm going to have my teams. I'm going to have my staff. I'm going to have my real estate. I'm going to have gold, silver in abundance, cattle, land, beautiful. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed when I go out. I'm blessed when I come in. Everywhere I go, I can be prosperous because I am prosperous. And, and I shine and flourish everywhere I am. You know, and, and a lot of people don't live like that at all. They're just struggling to get ahead. Now, let me tell something across to the nations of the world. You've got to break corruption in your life. I know it was in your society. I know you've seen a lot of criminal activity in your upbringing. I know you've seen a lot of that. But you have to stop lying, cheating, stealing, conniving, talking behind people's backs, showing dishonor, and doing all this nonsense. That's one way God can begin to bless you because he sees you're trustworthy. And you have to just get yourself serious. And when I listen to a man who's full of vision... And I see the strictness that they have about certain principles and, you know, rules of life and the game of life and things and how to do the way that God wants, according to his word. I mean, I really get touched by that. And here's another thing. We need to be lifelong learners. You don't want to ever stop learning. I'm teaching you here right now something profound, and you need to listen and get a hold of it. Let it get in your spirit and share this message with friends. And, uh, and with everybody you can, and, you know, put your comments on the screen. I'm not interacting with the screen right now because I have another meeting I'm running to, and I'm just trying to deliver this real quick here, and then I'm heading on to the conference again. Now, the Lord is, the Lord is really serious about wanting to bless people. I've said that prophetically to you. I've released this in many meetings and many events, and the Lord is saying that now you have to get your life in order because God loves order. He loves structure. He loves integrity. He hates... Uh, uh, an unjust balance. He hates cr- crooked lie. He hates lying. He's not a man that he should lie. Numbers twenty three nineteen. The son of man that he should repent. He's not going to change his mind about because he's right the first time. You know, you can have that life of confidence, boldness, and perfect decision making ability. That your life is just right, 
and everything you do it is right the first time you know it's not like you have to second guess and wonder if you're right or not you know and then you know here's another thing if God speaks to you you'll know it it's like it's like a thunder it's like a thunderous event when the Lord speaks you can't misunderstand it you can't uh, uh, mistake it like I think the Lord spoke or I no 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 when God tells you something you'll hear it clear and you'll know it's real and and then now another thing you want to do is you want to go back and begin to recollect on what the Lord has spoken to you before that you could remember and and ponder on and begin to obey him in and he'll begin to bless your life and, you know, the Holy Spirit had me write this book. He's help, helping me write this book. It's been transcribed, and the covers and the inside's getting finished, and I have to go through the final edit. It's a bit laborious, but we're getting it done. And it'll be done pretty soon. Now, as, as long as many of the other books I'm writing, they're going to be coming out in a flurry, in a fury. <laughs> Fiercely, in Jesus' name. And by design, not by accident. And on purpose, with purpose, to help people be blessed because God's made me a teacher in the body of Christ and a prophet to the nations and a success strategist, a success teacher for many people and uh, also the rise of the organization of success. We're going to uh, relaunch something in that in the coming days. Uh, that's going to take a minute because I want to do it in a good way. I want to have a little infrastructure built around that and then people are going to join it. In fact, the Lord said 50,000 members are yours in that thing. 50,000. The Lord spoke to me. 50,000. Five zero. 50,000 people we, you'll, you'll be serving to help them become successful in learnedness and knowledge and information and skills and training and, you know, mentoring and coaching and things that they need. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't mistake the word coach. It just means that you're like you're helping the troops to get ahead. It's really leadership, you know. Let me call it leadership. In the kingdom, we should call it that because people think this coach thing, what is it, like a life coach and all that life coach is like a motivational speech or speakers. And, you know, like get, off your, get, off your, get off your wounded animal with that, okay? God has everybody to train. Everything is about leadership and training and information and learning and then mobilization and activation. So if you want to call it apostolic, prophetic, and leadership-oriented, fine. It's just the terminology, but the function is the same. A good pastor is the head coach of the troops, of, 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 the, of, the, of the team. My Lord, he's like rah, 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 preaching, praying for them. You know, do you, are you, get, do you get that? So there's this analogy that was made that uh, is like a different thing and people want to, you know, differentiate, but it's really the same. It's really the same thing in the formation and, and movement and, and, you know, uh, act, act, activity of it. So, many of you are friends, many of you are partners, many of you are uh, becoming that, and many of you are also uh, protégés, like uh, you're really listening and you're really learning and I'm helping you to, to grow up so you can go up. That's another book I, I'm writing. I, we had a visitation of God in this place called Savo, T-S-A-V-O, in Kenya, in eastern Kenya, going down toward Mombasa from Nairobi, about four hours east of Nairobi. And uh, my Lord, baobab trees, those trees, they're called B-A-O-B-O-B, -O -B -O -B, baobab trees. They're the most amazing looking trees. They look like they're so round and thick with these funny branches, and there's many of them there. That's the only place in the world where they grow. And... Uh, I, I was just amazed by, by, by those trees. And, and of course, we had encounters with the elephants and the giraffes while I was there, and that really, really tipped me up to go over there because I wanted to see the animals too. But we had two meetings, uh, Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning, and then headed back to the capital city on, right after the meeting, which was a long drive, and uh, the pastor seemed tired a bit. He was ready. He was sleeping a bit in the in, in my my van. I have this big, beautiful uh, luxury van, customized, very nice, very comfortable. Refrigerators and custom cushy seats and all that, you know. And uh, 
electric doors and all that, you know. Very, very fancy for that part of the world. And even for here. And they don't make those in America. They don't import those ones to America. I don't know why. Maybe they don't like the power doors or something. They're scared. I don't know. They can't get into America. Those, those, these kind of specific vans come out of Japan and they don't get to America. There's, no, there's none of them in America. You, in America, you won't even know what it is. You've never seen one because there's never been one on the road. They just cannot get here. There's just something that precludes them from getting through the government to get here. I don't know what that is. But uh, it's a wonderful vehicle. So the um, you might see that tall Mercedes Sprinter or something like that, or Transit, which is like the Nissan or Japanese version. Uh, but this other van is really, really quite a deal. But you can only get those in places where Japan can export them to, and one of those nations is Kenya. So uh, they call, they affectionately nickname Kenya Toyota country, you know, because there's so many Toyotas there. It's a different world, folks. You, you, you just see all these Toyotas everywhere. Some other cars too, but mostly Toyotas. It's amazing. And uh, they even have a, a thing called the VX, the Land Cruiser, which is a really expensive SUV. But it's not that luxurious. I mean, I guess you can get it customized. I probably would if I got one. I'd probably change the seats and make it real cushy and nice inside. Put some new carpets in there. But it's very plain. But it's got a very powerful engine, a very powerful drivetrain that can go off-road. And the big round tires and very high up. And it's really good for the rugged, rough roads, which are quite, uh, quite a fiasco in East Africa. Now, so... Um, I was driving in Nigeria. People driving very fast on the road, and they got to slow down sometimes to drive around the potholes, which are like craters going down into the ground. If you hit that, if you hit that, those at a high speed, I hope you're saved because uh, you're going into eternity. But I mean, I was on the edge of my seat with this guy driving, flying around cars. They pull up right to the corner panel of the car, like inches away at 140 kilometers an hour, and I thought, dude, slow down, stop that. Okay, I, I just said how to say. And I don't know if you like me telling him that, but I was like, hey, you know, we were driving from uh, uh, Kaduna to Abuja. And it was, a, it was a little bit too much for me, you know. And I, I know another guy, a businessman, came all the way from Lagos, drive all the way out to Kaduna, <clears throat> which is far, excuse me. And <sighs> Kaduna is famous for people getting slaughtered by those other people. The Christians getting slaughtered, and uh, it's been very, very chaotic. And I was right in that city, having a major meeting there. And uh, so we stayed in the best hotel that was there, and everything was like breaking down, and it was it was chaos. And then we found this nice little uh, Mediterranean kind of food restaurant. And uh, that was very nice. They had some nice chicken and some the pita bread and the hummus and the olives and all that. Nice salad. It was very good. Coffee, good coffee. So, but uh, he told me, he said it's like a 10-hour drive from Lagos to Kaduna. And I was like, hey, that's far. He said, but he did it in a few hours because he was doing 200 and something kilometers an hour. I mean, people are wild, you know. That's fast. I heard a story about people in the outback of Australia and they go through this place that's like a nothing kind of place. There's nothing there, way out and way out. So far out back, you, you're definitely not in front of anything. And uh, they were doing like 240 kilometers on the road. Well, 300 kilometers, I know this, is about 180 miles an hour. So that's got to be like 140 miles an hour. Um, 150. That's fast. Just to cut the drive time of four hours to two hours, cut it in half. God, just give us a helicopter and a little, or, or a nice plane we can get around. But, um, so, uh, there's one guy in a Lamborghini. He, he, he didn't know it was going to be his last five minutes on the earth when he took off. And hit 310 miles an hour and then crashed. But that's another story. That was, that was not good to view that. 
And his last words were, ah, before the car. Then they had a picture of it like in pieces, nothing left, burnt to a crisp because it went on fire when it exploded when it crashed. So you got to be, you got to be careful. But we, you know, we have angels, you know what I mean? But there's also the speed limit and all that. So I, I, I stay, try to stay within the speed limit. I think it's a good thing. I think it's honorable. I think it's right. And even if you're busy, you can have somebody drive you and then they, they run it really good. And you just, Map out the time. You could just do your typing, your study, be on the phone, you know, while you drive, while you're going somewhere. So it's like a mobile office. You're always working and moving and you stay within the confines of, within reason, okay? So uh, the, 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 the Lord is, um, is just dropping these tremendous revelations uh, uh, through me as I'm, as I'm traveling. Now, when I was in Savo, before I start talking about these other, I was in Savo, and the, the, we had a visitation of the Lord there, and the Lord said this phrase to me, grow up and you'll go up. If you want to go up, meaning to high things in life, not just eternity, because just confessing the Lord, even if it was the last moment of your life, and if you do it with a sincere heart and really repent and, you know, Except the Lord in a prayer, you can just jump out of this life into the next life into eternity. But you've not worked for anything. You have no reward. You have nothing. But you're just going to be in a great place. And, you know, there's nothing better than that, by the way. And, or especially, you're not going to the other place for eternity. So... Um, and, 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 while, and while I was speaking, the Lord said to me, I want you to make a book out of this. So that's another book. Based on the phrase, grow up and you'll go up. I'm trying to get the title right on that. That's what another book is in the making. Also, uh, The Power of Focus, which I have another title for, it, which I'm not going to say now a better sounding title. When the book gets uh, the final, we're going to put that title on it. Also something about decisions and also about uh, uh, another one called uh, about getting off the merry-go-round. I saw this merry-go-round. I had a revelation. The Lord said to me, people are going around in a circle in their life and they're not getting on with the program. There's reasons for that. I want you to break that. I want you to teach on that. I did a whole six volume or seven volume series on that or maybe, yeah, maybe six or seven volumes or, or so on that. And uh, that's becoming a book about getting off the merry-go-round. So many great things are coming out. Again, uh, please do get this and visit my website and try to do it on the shopping cart. Let me know how it's going. You could write me by private inbox here on Facebook. Also, you can WhatsApp me on plus 254-792-320-780. Plus 254, some of my friends can put that on the screen. Plus 254, uh... Uh, se- plus two five four seven nine two three two zero seven eight zero. You can also use that for donations in Kenya. Uh, but I cannot send you these discs in the mail right now. But, but when I when I get back to uh, Kenya again, we can be in touch, and you can get them from me directly in a meeting. We'll have them there. I promise you that. But right now, I cannot mail them but in the u.s and canada this is your chance to get these anywhere just make sure you do that donation of twenty dollars or more and i will or more whatever the lord's telling you to do and uh i will uh get in touch with you and be able to mail these to you okay so we have them in stock and ready to go thank you jesus so father we thank you for the visitation of revelation upon your your son and daughter here that i'm teaching and counseling and and talking to and loving on and uh, passing the revelations you've given me unto them. And I just declare that you're going to cause them to be raised up in this moment of time, in this season and hour, and greater things are going to happen than they've ever known before in their entire life, that this season of this new year and this new season that's coming now is going to be the best ever. And I'm prophesying and declaring the breakthrough for them in Jesus' name. If you'd like to send me 
Amen. If you'd like to send me a, a message on that, just write me a private uh, inbox here on Facebook. But I'd prefer if you do it on WhatsApp to plus 254-792-320-780. Uh, that goes through Kenya, but it reaches me anywhere in the world. It's not good for phone. It's only good for WhatsApp and M-Pesa. M-Pesa will get directly to us there. Uh, and, and you and Kenya know what that is. It's a, it's a way of sending an offering and sending... A, Funds via on uh, the cell phone. And WhatsApp messages will get me anywhere I am in the world. Please do use that. Plus 254-792-320-780. And I will uh, uh, update you too with other, other continents that we have numbers uh, in the coming days. There's a new number I have. I don't know what it is off head, but... I'll, I'll do it on the next one, or maybe we'll put it here online later. And the Lord bless you. I love you. I'm praying for you. So the best way to get to me directly, to talk to me directly, is plus 254-792-320-780. To get, make a note of that number. Save it in your contacts. Open up the WhatsApp. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. And, and uh, send me a message and a hello with your name and your email address, please. If you put your email, I'll have your telephone number when you write me, but you can put your email address and your name and where you're from. Please do that now in Jesus' name, and we can stay in touch very well. I have some new blogs and new newsletters coming out with startling, powerful revelations that we're going to put in print that are not the books, but they're like newsletters and blogs and little teachings and uh, newsletters. You know, you can you can get those. Uh, via the email and via WhatsApp, okay? So I love you. I'm praying for you. Isaiah 48, 17 says, I am the Lord your God who will teach you how to profit and lead you in the way you should go. Deuteronomy 28, 1 says, Obey me. And verse 2 says, I will set you on high over nations. And then verse 3 said, The blessings of the Lord will come and overtake you. And also Deuteronomy 8, 18, The power to create wealth says, I will give you power to create, generate, magnify, manage, make, multiply money and resources and wealth. Also, God is, is, is telling me that he has real estate in mind for some people and great business upgrades for people, great business partnerships for people. And as you partner with this ministry, the anointing that's upon us for financial breakthrough and prosperity is going to begin to come upon you and you're going to see the favor of God. I prophesy that to you in Jesus' name. Connect up with this anointing. Write me a message here on the comments. And uh, if you really are not clicking everywhere, just make sure you do it here. You can put your name, or you just, or your name will be there. Put your telephone number, hello, what you want to say. But share this message with everybody. Please do share. Uh, other people need to hear this and see this, to be blessed by this, and to connect with, with this ministry, okay? And uh, aren't you glad that I just say it so plainly? Share this. People need to be blessed. And when you do that, you're sowing a seed to help them. A seed is anything you have that when you give it, it blesses and enhances the life of another. That's a seed. And when you do that, God begins to prosper you back. You could do it financially. You could do it in context. You could do it in networking, connecting, sharing. There's so many ways to sow. And, uh, uh, but this, this monetary thing of sowing is just phenomenal. And we've seen people that have literally become extravagantly blessed because of their connection and partnership with this anointing. I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll talk to you on the next broadcast. I'm so honored and thrilled to be in your life. And I'm honored and thrilled that you're in my life. In Jesus' name, I'm praying for you. Talk to you later.